In this video you will learn the thinking needed to ace a decimal fraction problem using long division, let's get into this. Here is our problem, setup, remember when we have a decimal divisor our first step is to make it workable on paper and get a whole number divisor instead. We move this decimal point one place to the right and we keep it balanced. Whatever I do here I have to do here. Both numbers are multiplied by 10, the entire problem is scaled up. We have a whole number divisor. We are dividing by 37, it means we need multiples of 37 some numbers give predictable patterns in their multiples, great for mini table to help us work. We can tell that 37 will not behave like that, it take ages. I am going to round 37 up to 40 and do a mini table for that instead. What I do I write the table of 4 and add 0, to make a table of 40, it makes sense and easy to do. This nifty little step gives me an estimate to work from. That way I won't waste too much time trying out numbers that are too low or are too high. Now let's divide, how many 37s are in 54? There is only one, put 37 under 54 and now we subtract to find the remainder. Can't do it, I need to borrow 10. Now we have 14 minus 7 result is 7. 4 minus 3 is 1. The remainder is 17. Bring down the next digit, how many 37s are in 177? My mini table of 40 tells me that 4 is the number to choose. Set up 37 into 4.7 into 4 is 28, and 4 threes are 12 plus 2 is 14. Do I need to go to 37 into 5? I can test that, just adding another 30, takes me to 178. Too much. We know 4 is a FYT, I put 4 on the answer line and the decimal point matching with the dividend. 148 FYT here, now we subtract. 7 minus 8, can't do it, I need to borrow 10. 7 becomes 6 and there is a 10 borrowed, now we have 17 minus 8. Now 18 minus 8 is 10, it is 1 less it is 9. And 6 minus 4 is 2 and these ones just cancel out. Last step, bring down the 6, my final question is how many 37s are in 296, that's a big one, that's why I need a mini table to help which value to try. 0.8 times 40 is 320 is a bit high. I am going with 8, let's multiply 37s into 8, answer is 296. Perfect, this is an exact fit, put the 8 on the answer line. Because this is an exact FYT we know that there is no remainder. Again I am happy with this because I have done the multiplication where is no remainder but if you show the question to all the way down to 0. You can put in those extra lines. I promise you a few minutes spent creating a mini table is time well spent. Thank you for joining Fortune Academy. Please subscribe us. Short division with a decimal remainder at Fortune Academy. Using a place value chart. We know that any number can broken down into ones tens hundreds thousands and so on. Right after the ones the smallest unit is the decimal point. Everything to the right to that is a fraction of a whole tenths hundredths thousandths so on. We can see that 200 is the same as 200.0 and 200.00. These are all ways to showing 200 and no fractional parts, agreed? Okay. When we do a division problem and get a remainder we just have a part of the whole group which is the divisor amount left over dot it is a fractional part that where we get our decimal remainder. You want to know how to get that decimal remainder like you get from a calculator. Here is how it's done with short division. Let's take a problem point 1, 2, 3, 4 divided by 5. I can see right away that I am going to get a remainder because the last digit of the dividend is 4. Only numbers ending in 5 and 0 are evenly divisible by 5. Everything else is a remainder time. Since I know there is a remainder I can get ready for it by set out the problem. I put the decimal point in the dividend and directly above it on the answer line. I put the couple of zero as well and we know that these two numbers means the same thing. Now I am ready for the calculation, first question how many fives in 12? 2 5s are 10, 2 left over. That's the remainder of 2 noe, how many fives in 23? 4 5s are 20. 3 left over, remainder 3. How many fives in 34.65s are 30 remainder 4? Like always in short division, the remainder goes right in front of next digit. I think you know what next, we say how many fives in 40. 8 5s are 40. Put the 8 up on the answer line, 
there is no remainder this time so we don't need extra zero after all so we have our quotient our answer of 246.8. One more example to make sure you got it. 8335 divided by 4, thinking about this problem for a moment before we even start. I know that nothing ends in 4 times table with 5 so I think this dividend will give me a remainder. So I get ready for it now, I put in a decimal point in my dividend and on the answer line and then write my zeros. Now I am ready to calculate. 4 into 8, 2 4 s are 8.4 into 3. It does not go dot put the zero. Now we cannot ignore the 3 we have not used yet, so now we say how many 4s in 33, 8 4s are 32 remainder 1. 4 into 15, 3 4s are 12. Remainder is 3. Dot now how many 4s in 30? 7 into 4 is 28. Reminder 2. And how many 4s in 20? 5 4s are 20. No remainder. Put the 5 upon the answer line and I have finished. How was that? Straightforward I hope. It will make math thinking flow better for you. Now go and practice for yourself. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe our channel. Order of Operations at Fortune Academy What if your teacher gave you this 10 plus 3 minus 1 in brackets to the power of 3 divided by 2 minus 4 times 3, would you know where to start? Usually beginners start with left side and keep working till the end. But that will give you the wrong answer. Don't panic. By the end of this video you will know exactly what to do. When we have to punch different mathematics operations in a single math problem there should be a method we should all follow. A standard approach. We call it order of operations. I think this is like a brain game. Have you ever heard BEDMAS? BEDMAS is an acronym. It tells us the order in which we do our little problems that go to make up big problem. First B stands for brackets, we always start from, next E is for exponent. Work out all the exponents O R powers, then it's D. D for division and M for multiplication to them in order from left to right finally it's addition and subtraction. In the order they occur from left to right. You might also heard the word Piedmas, it is the acronym. It is the same thing. Only instead of saying bracket we can use the word parentheses. Which is another word for brackets. Now look at that problem again, to work it out we will use the order of operations. Bedmas tells us brackets first. That's easy, 3 minus 1 that is 2. I worked out the brackets so that's go, next is exponent. There is still an exponent that is attached to what was in the brackets. Next I write rest of the problem which I have not touched yet. After brackets we will do exponents next. 2 to the power 3. That means factor 2 used 3 times. Which looks like this dot 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Put that in line underneath where it came from. And then again put all the remaining terms. Next Bedmas tells us to do multiplication and division in the order they occur. I have the divided 2 term here, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Keep it centered under the parent term and we have also a multiplication to do. 4 times 3 is 12, keep it also centered. Write all the remaining elements in line. Now all the left id to complete the addition and subtraction in the order they occur from left to right. So 10 plus 4 is 14. 
keeping everything clearly in line, 14 minus 12 is 2. Two is our final answer. You can see that working with the order of operation is crucial. If we don't use the order of operations we will get a wrong answer. We got to follow the rules of the game to win. And finally when you have finished all your working out check your answer with calculator. Please subscribe our channel to follow more videos. LCM what is it and how to find it at Fortune Academy? LCM stands for least common multiple or the lowest common multiple. LCM is the smallest multiple that is common to our more numbers. Since for LCM we need to know our multiplication tables. The smallest multiple id LCM. Let's say to find the multiple of in 4 and 6. We are going to list multiples of both 4 and 6 and we will look the smallest number common to both lists in the LCM. Note down the multiples of 4 in a list 4, 8, 1, 2, 1, 6, 2, 0, 2, 4, and then list some multiples of 6, 6, 1, 2, 1, 8, 2, 4. I see that 12 and 24 crop up in both listing. LCM means the lowest common multiple and the smallest number in both lists is 12. So the LCM of 4 and 6 is 12. Sometimes you have been given a set of three numbers and told to find the LCM in that case we goes for set the list of multiples of each number and find the lowest value in all three sets. We will find the LCM of 3, 6 and 10. So we list the multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 1, 2, 1, 5, 1, 8, 2, 1, 2, 4, 2, 7, 3, 0 oh, and now a list multiples of 6, 6, 1, 2, 1, 8, 2, 4, 3, 0. Oh, notice that every multiple of 6 is in the list of multiple of 3. But we can't pick LCM yet because we have to look for multiples of 10. So let's do that now 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0. Oh, I can stop listing now because 30 is in all 3 set of multiples. So 30 is the lowest multiple which is common in ALL. So the LCM is 30. The nice thing about this method is you can keep the note of the multiple as you go so you have proof of LCM. And that's great for addition purposes. Teachers love this method as this is so clear plus you get to practice your tables. Basically this is best for your math muscles. Please subscribe Fortune Academy. Short division with a remainder at Fortune Academy. It is a fast method. Here is how to use it to work very quickly with remainders. Let's start with a nice small one. 19 divided by 5. There is no 5s in 1 so how many 5s in 19? If you know your 5 times table you know 3 5s are 15. There is a remainder here. If we count down from 15 to 19 to quickly find the remainder, 1 6 1 7 1 8 1 9. Counted on 4 to get to 19. There is a remainder of 4. Write a little r on the answer line then you put the remainder amount in. So 19 divided by 5 is 3 remainder 4. We never ignore a remainder. Another one, a bit longer this time. 197 divided by 3. Set in enough space between digits, okay. There is no 3 in 1. So how many 3s in 19? If you know your 3 times table you know that 6 3s are 18. Put up the 6. Count on to 19. That is the remainder of 1. Now ho many 3s in 17. 5 3s are 15. Count down. 0.1617. That's the remainder of 2 and we are done. When you are working on your division problems, you are going to get remainders. 
you might find easy to help your fingers to keep count as I just showed you. Last one a bit longer again this time, 2781 divided by 6, set it out on the page with plenty of space to work in. L here we go. There is no 6 in 2, so how many 6 in 27? If you know your 6 times table, you know 4 6 s are 24 dot put up the 4 and count on 2 5 2 6 2 7, there is a remainder of 3. Now how many 6s are in 38? 6 6s six are 36 dot and count on, 37 38, there is a remainder of 2. Now how many 6s are in 21? 0.36s are 18. Count on, 192021, there is a remainder of 3 and we are done. Short division works because we can handle the lower numbers in our heads and we can use our fingers. Short division is best for small divisors. But you need practice. Hope you enjoy our video and learn from it. Thank you and please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Finding the LCM using prime factorization at Fortune Academy. If we have to find the LCM of 12 and 32, we know we can list some multiples a and f find the smallest common value. So multiples of 12 are 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, 4, 8, 6, 0, 7, 2, 8, 4, 9, 6, and 108. Multiples of 32 are 3, 2, 6, 4, 9, 6. LCM of 12 and 32 is 96. Now I am going to use these same numbers to find the LCM through prime factorization. And the great thing about this method is it works for any number of any size. First we will do the prime factorization of each of the number. Prime number in red and the composite number in blue. 12 is from 2 times 6 and 6 is from 2 times 3. Circle the primes. Now 3 2 1 4 times 8 is 3 2.4 is from 2 times 2. 8 is from 2 times 4, 4 is from 2 times 2, circle the prime numbers. Now we will make a quick table of the prime factors. Using columns we will match the like factors. Leave the space where is no MATCH.32 has the prime factor 2 5 times 12 has the prime factor 2 twice and then the remaining prime factor is 3. I put a line under a prime factors. Finally we have the prime factors of LCM use one factor of every column and only one factor from vertical pair. The LCM of thesis products is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Work it out. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 Idaho 8, times 2 Idaho 16, times 2 is 32 times 3 is 96. So the LCM of 12 and 32 is 96 and we know that it is right because we already find out using the MULTIOLE listing method. Now we KNNOE that the method is working. Let's try a more tricky pair. 28 and 35. First find the prime factors of each number. 28 is from 4 times 7 and 4 is from 2 times 2 circle the prime 35 is from 5 times 7 both RPIME. Next we do the prime FACTOS table, match FACTOS vertically. Leave the space if there is no match. 28 is 2 times 2 times 7 and 35 is 5 times 7. Now we have prime factors of the LCM. That is 2 times 2 times 5 times 7. Finally work out the value of the LCM. Point 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20, 20 times 7 is 140. You can see even you are given bigger numbers, Using prime factorization is going to be very helpful. Please subscribe our channel.